Hey guys, hope you're all having a good one today. We're going to talk a little bit in this video about what's coming soon for Battlefield 5. Yeah, I use the word soon. And if you've read the title, you're going to know a little bit about what we're talking about. We've got some delays to discuss, which is disappointing. The next major update coming to Battlefield 5, Update 4.4, was slated to land this week, bringing us the two new close quarter maps that were shown off at Gamescom, Lofoten Islands and Provence. And the max rank increase was due to come as well, but sadly, the update is being delayed, and it's now not likely to arrive until next week, early September. In the latest This Week in Battlefield 5 post that's put up on the forums and on the official Battlefield 5 Reddit page, community manager Jeff Braddock broke the news that Update 4.4 would likely now be landing next week. The team is working to finalise the build and put it through QA checks to ensure we're delivering a quality update that addresses bugs, resolves some core issues, stuttering is a big one, and delivers content, progression update, Lofoten Islands, and Provence. And to do this without bringing new issues. The update is currently tracking for release next week, and we'll keep you updated on the status as we get updates. Our next status check will be August 28th. We'll have more information to share then. Now, this statement doesn't confirm the patch is actually being delayed, it just says that it's coming next week, but I think most players were expecting it to launch in the last week of August. As with most other Battlefield 5 patches, they launch towards the end of the month. More recently, however, we have seen that scale back in the amount of patches that Battlefield 5 has been receiving, and instead the team is focusing on delivering larger patches on a less frequent basis, and this is most likely to allow for more time to check in bug fixes and more time to then test those fixes as the patch is being finalised. Braddock alludes to this in his post, mentioning the point of delivering a quality update, which I think we can all agree hasn't been something that's happened that much from about March onwards for Battlefield 5. Instead of delivering a patch with bugs in it that then needs to be hotfixed, increasing the team's workload and applying even more pressure to the situation, the team is just consolidating all of those fixes into larger patches and they're taking more time to test them. And that can only be a good thing for Battlefield 5 over the long term. The game doesn't have the best public image at the moment. Most people kind of think of Battlefield 5 as a bit of a meme, and I wouldn't really argue that that's the case because it has been setback after setback. And surely at the moment, the priority has to be improving that public image. And that starts by proving that the team can deliver patches that make the game better, not worse. However, in this case specifically with patch 4.4, despite it not being framed as a delay by that Reddit post, it very much is a delay because the patch includes the two close quarter maps, Lofoten Islands and Provence, and both of those were scheduled to be released in August according to the roadmap. Right now, patch 4.4 will launch next week, which is the first week of September, pushing the maps out of their launch window which is disappointing. Despite it only being a relatively small delay, it chalks up another missed deadline for the Battlefield 5 team, and that doesn't help improve the game's image, despite the delay being caused by the presence of critical bugs and the team not wanting to release a patch that doesn't include bugs. The team's caught between a rock and a hard place here. They need to deliver quality updates for the game, and they need to deliver them on a time schedule that's acceptable for the player base. So there's really no right answer. I do think they have taken the better path by delaying and working on that patch to make sure it's up to standard that players expect, but they're sure to disappoint a lot of players yet again by having to delay even more content. I can completely understand player frustration here, I feel that frustration as well, and I'm pretty confident that the DICE team is frustrated with the situation too. It's not fun being near constantly downbeat about Battlefield 5, but I guess things always do get worse before they get better. Now, on to the next bit of news, as I'm sure you're aware of by now, or maybe you're not, so I'll quickly go over it. The proposed 5v5 competitive game mode for Battlefield 5 has been cancelled. This was confirmed last week by DICE producer Ryan MacArthur in a blog post. He explained that with a focus on improving the quality of the game experience and adding more of the content that players want to see, the 5v5 mode was the feature the team felt was right to get rid of. 
and I think a lot of players in the core community have reacted positively to this change in direction. Now, I know there is a section of the Battlefield player base that do want a competitive experience in the game, and those players will have something on offer once Private Games launches in the next couple of months. DICE has spoken about their intention to build something competitive alongside the community so they have something that, that they can use but the bespoke 5v5 mode is dead and it won't be coming to the game in that form. With the 5v5 mode, however, there were a bunch of weapons and gadgets that were also included with it, alongside the two maps Lofoten Islands and Provence, which we've spoken about being repurposed for Squad Conquest and Team Deathmatch. You got to see some of those weapons in the Chapter 4 trailer. Weapons like the Wellrod Pistol, the M2 Jungle Carbine, the Bazooka, and a few more. Now, those weapons, they were tied directly to the 5v5 mode, and they would only be accessible in the 5v5 mode. With that mode now being cancelled, there is a bunch of weapon content that currently isn't being utilised in Battlefield 5. DICE has plans to take all of those weapons from the 5v5 mode and bring them to the main multiplayer experience so that we can use them on all the standard game modes in the game. Now that 5v5 is dead, but the weapons are not currently implemented in the correct way to just have them in main multiplayer. They lack specializations, they lack spec trees, they're not balanced correctly, and they don't have weapon skin abilities either. That means the team needs to do some work on them before they can be released. This means, despite seeing those weapons in the Chapter 4 trailer, we won't be seeing those weapons release in Chapter 4. They're likely going to launch in future chapters of Battlefield 5. That could mean they land around the same time as the Pacific Theatre, maybe some before, maybe some after. We do have one confirmed coming before the Pacific, the Masson Machine Gun, that's scheduled for patch 4.6, due to go live in September sometime. And then other weapons like the Shoshar, the Ithaca 37 Shotgun, the Wellrod, the Bazooka, and a few others, they don't have that go live date yet. They're set for the future chapters. Now, to me, it is quite concerning that the 5v5 mode was developed so differently to the main game that weapons now have to be completely reworked to fit them into the standard multiplayer. And it's not like some of them weren't unknown weapons either. Weapons like the Ithaca 37, the Wellrod and the Bazooka, they're iconic World War II weapons, and those, prior to 5v5 being cancelled, they were going to be locked into the 5v5 mode. That looks like what would have been a really bad decision from the DICE team, locking iconic World War II weapons behind a game mode that large sections of the player base wouldn't be that interested in. It just seems like a really, really odd decision. And of course now, they are stuck in a bit of a predicament, because those weapons aren't implemented correctly, and even more work now has to be done to bring those weapons to the main game. So. In cancelling 5v5, I think that was definitely the right decision, considering more resources can now be put towards the standard multiplayer experience, but the fact that it was developed so differently has created more problems for the DICE team further down the line. It just looks like really bad planning for this 5v5 mode. Why it was developed so differently from the rest of the game, I don't think we're ever really going to know, but even though these weapons have now been quote-unquote delayed until further chapters, at least we are looking at more content in the future of Battlefield 5. But that's all the bad news dealt with. I have a much more positive note to end this video on. Some information about what content is coming this week to Battlefield 5. The grind and fortress game modes will be returning to the game for this week's Tides of War activities, and the reward is going to be the Panzerbuchser anti-material rifle. That's kind of like the counterpart to the boys' AT rifle that DICE introduced a while back. The team has been working to change the grind and fortress modes based on community feedback, so they're not likely to be exactly the same as they were last time, but I know both of the modes were extremely popular with certain sections of the community because of the type of gameplay that they support. 64 players, tight spaces, lots of explosions, just ultimate infantry chaos. And the reward this week is a one-hit kill sniper rifle, so what could possibly go wrong? So then, right now for Battlefield 5, things still aren't looking that great. Al Sundan on Conquest hasn't launched, the 4.4 update has been slightly delayed, and 5v5 being cancelled has meant that content already completed is now having to be reworked, taking more time to come to the game. 
it is really a tough time to be a fan of Battlefield at the moment. But I will be here, bringing you guys the news and content as always, even if you're not playing the game. I see you guys down in the comments section saying, I don't play this game, but I come here to watch the videos to see if I should play this game. I appreciate you, because if you're coming back to watch my videos to inform yourself about what's happening, you're going to be able to choose the right point that you can jump back in with Battlefield 5. And so keeping yourself informed is really the best thing you can do. I'm not giving up on Battlefield 5 just yet. I know some people have, but feel free to always come back, watch the video, figure out if it's the right time for you to come and play this game again. We've all got through Battlefield 4's launch and we survived that. We survived Battlefield Hardline as well. I think we're going to survive the current controversies with Battlefield 5. So just a big thanks to everyone who's still watching my content. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.